has Perseverance found life on Mars? The short answer is no, and the longer answer is kinda maybe. But NASA announced that Perseverance had drilled a rock core on Mars that might hold a biosignature, and that word is the closest we ever come to saying we found life on Mars. They didn't say that, but a lot of articles sure did right after. At the time I was writing about the interstellar comet, 3i Atlas, and its alleged technosignatures, and I thought it would be a good idea to cover not only the news from Mars, but to discuss biosignatures more and what makes them different from technosignatures. And while channel regulars know I tend to be very skeptical of alien technosignatures, the reverse is not true for biosignatures. I would not be surprised if those were fairly common. We did not just find life on Mars, that's pure hype, but what we found was a possible indicator of life, and we may find it there one day, and we did find evidence that could legitimate the point that way. So today we'll dive into what Perseverance actually found in that rock called Chiava Falls in Chizero Crater, why scientists are excited, and why they are also cautious. We'll also explore what a biosignature really is, why it's different from a technosignature, and what this discovery means for the long quest to answer one of humanity's oldest questions, are we alone? Setting the Stage The Perseverance rover has been wandering the Jezero Crater since February 2021. Jezero is an ancient lake basin, and a place where water once pooled and rivers once flowed. If Mars ever had life, this is one of the best places to look. In July 2024, the rover drilled into a rock formation called Bright Angel in the Naretva Vallis River Valley. From a border they nicknamed Shiava Falls, Perseverance collected a core sample dubbed Sapphire Canyon. For over a year, the data from that rock has been quietly analyzed, and in September 2025 the results were published in Nature. What they found was unusual, the rock contained colorful mineral leopard spots, rich in compounds like Vivianite and Grigite. On Earth, Vivianite often forms in wetlands or peat bogs around decaying organic matter, while Grigite can be produced by certain microbes. The spots also appeared in reaction fronts, boundaries where chemical processes had played out over time. Combined with the presence of organic carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus, this looked an awful lot like the chemical playground of microbes. But looks can be deceiving. What is a biosignature? NASA defines a biosignature as a substance, structure, or pattern that might have a biological origin but also arise through non-living processes. In other words, it's a maybe. How maybe it is depends on the specific signature and also if it's accompanied by others. For instance, if a planet is detected to have a lot of free oxygen, and to reflect green light rather heavily, either one is a decent biosignature in and of itself, but the presence of both makes it much more likely. Mars has neither obvious microbes crawling around nor technosignatures like radio towers, but it may still carry the quieter marks of life in the form of mineral biosignatures. On Earth, these take many shapes. We see them in stromatolites, those layered stone structures built up by ancient microbial mats. We see them in the subtle fingerprints of isotope ratios, where living things tend to prefer one atomic weight over another. Life also leaves behind certain minerals, precipitated through its chemical tinkering, or the organic relics of amino acids and lipids long after the organisms themselves have vanished. The difficulty of course is that nature is a good mimic, chemistry is endlessly inventive, and most of these supposed hallmarks of biology can also be forged without any living hand. Lightning, volcanic eruptions, and even the relentless glare of ultraviolet sunlight can produce organic molecules out of simple ingredients. Mineral reactions alone can sculpt intricate lifelike patterns. Without context, without that wider web of evidence to support them, the rocks will not easily confess whether they were shaped by life or by the blind dance of geology. That's why scientists talk about confidence levels because a single measurement or a single mineral in a rock does not get you very far. NASA even formalized this with the Confidence of Life Detection Scale, or Chord Scale, a seven-step ladder meant to keep our excitement tethered to evidence. At the bottom rung, you have the simple detection of something interesting, a chemical, a structure, a pattern that could be biological. A little higher, you begin ruling out these easy abiotic explanations. Higher still, and you start confirming those results with independent instruments and multiple lines of data. Only at the very top, 
after years of cross-checks, replications, and sample returns can you finally declare that life has been detected. Finding a potential biosignature like the one Perseverance drilled at the Sapphire Canyon does not put us on the top rung or even halfway up, and that slow, careful climb is exactly what makes science trustworthy and why each new maybe is worth celebrating even when it isn't yet a yes. The Discovery at Bright Angel So what exactly did Perseverance see? The rover's Pixel and Sherlock instruments, X-ray spectrometers and Raman imagers, scanned Shiava Falls and saw those leopard spots. Those spots carried fingerprints of Vivianite and Grigite, and again both can form from microbial processes. They are arranged in patterns suggesting electron transfer reactions, the kind microbes use to extract energy. Critically, the rocks were sedimentary clays and silts, the sort of fine-grained deposits that on Earth often preserve ancient cells, and they were surprisingly young. Previous thinking held that if life existed on Mars, you need to go back billions of years, to the earliest, wettest eras, but these rocks may be hundreds of millions of years younger, meaning that Mars may have been habitable for longer than expected. It's compelling, it's exciting, but it's not yet proof, because Vivianite and Grigite can also form without life, under heat, acid, or chemical catalysts and while those conditions do not seem to match Bright Angel, ruling them out entirely takes more data than one rover can provide. That is the entirety of it, there's no fossilized organisms or additional biosignatures nearby. And I hesitate to say the presence of two minerals increase the odds as much as they can form the same overall conditions. If they formed from unrelated conditions, say one from acid content and the other from heat and pressure, you'd have a bigger indicator that it was a true pair of biosignatures though of course it also isn't uncommon, but conditions get acidic if the pressure goes up. Biosynchros vs. Technosynchros It's worth pausing here to contrast biosynchros with technosynchros. Biosynchros are evidence of biology, chemistry and structures that microbes or organisms might produce. They are subtle, often ambiguous, and usually require multiple lines of evidence. Technosynchros, by contrast, are evidence of technology, things an intelligent species leaves behind. Radio transmissions, laser pulses, atmospheric pollution, Dyson spheres, even city lights. Note that in neither case does such a censure imply an attempt at communication, those can count too, a radio message aimed at us or a howl in the night. So too it doesn't imply current and active life either, a campsite strewn with beer cans and litter and burned sticks in a pile represents a bunch of techno censures but nobody's there anymore. Fossils or leftover droppings will be the same for biosignatures. Active life is likely to be way easier to spot. Also an important difference is that technosignatures are much harder to get false positives on. A candy bar wrapper complete with a list of ingredients is just not likely to form naturally. Lots of chemistry looks like life, but very little looks like engineering unless it is. If you see a narrowband radio, you're not going to mistake it for geology. That's why I say intelligence recognizes intelligence, the more technology, the less ambiguity. A simple arrowhead can reasonably be mistaken for a natural rock, especially with some erosion, and vice versa, but one fixed to an arrow shaft or in a leather bag with other arrowheads and curiosities is not mistakable as anything but technocentures, meaning you found alien life or you found a fake. But biocentures are our first step. We would reasonably expect planets that spawn life to be much more common than ones that spawn technological life. They tell us that the universe is prone to life at all, even at the microbial level. Technocentros answer the second question, does that life ever climb the ladder to intelligence? Why this matters for Mars So why does one rock core matter so much? At first, it strengthens the case that Mars really was habitable. We already knew there were ancient rivers, lakes, and clays, now we see chemical systems that look like they could have powered metabolism. Second, it shifts the timeline. If relatively young sediments preserve biosignatures, then Mars must have been alive much later than thought, maybe even during eras when Earth was teeming with forests and dinosaurs. That raised the possibility that life could have persisted underground or in a niche environment for far longer. Third. It underscores the need to bring these samples back to Earth. 
Perseverance now has cash 27 rock cores, and they are sitting in sealed tubes waiting for a future mission to collect them and fly them home, only at Earth's labs, with a full arsenal of microscopes, isotope analyzers, and particle accelerators, we will be able to say for sure whether those leopard spots were microbial fingerprints or clever geology. The Bigger Picture Whether or not this pans out as evidence of life, the discovery is still transformative, because every interstellar rock we sample, every Martian core we drill, brings us closer to answering the question, are we alone? If Mars once had life, it means Earth is not unique, and biology may spring up wherever conditions allow, right? Well, not quite. Both Mars and Earth have had a lot of impacts in volcanic eruptions over the years, and some bacteria are incredibly hardy. It is decently plausible a life-bearing rock might migrate from one planet to another in the same solar system. We don't really know the odds on abiogenesis, so we couldn't say if an interplanetary transplant was more or less likely than life emerging anew. For that matter, one of the better known and reasonably plausible origin of life theories for Earth is panspermia, that life developed on cometary bodies and rained down on Earth, in which case raining down on Mars and Venus would be just as plausible. So no, 3i Atlas is not a spaceship, and Perseverance has not found Martians. See that episode for more on the asteroid. I am writing both episodes back to back while enjoying vacation in the forests of Kentucky, so even odds on which of these I release first, but in both cases, what we really found is something just as precious. Data. Each new anomaly, each new rock core, is another clue in the universe's grand detective story. Time will tell if that story includes life arising on other worlds, or if we have to bring it there ourselves. And whether Mars had life in the past, or even now, may remain unknown, but it will in the future. Soon life will arrive on Mars, from here on Earth, and help us find out if we were the first life to walk on the Red Planets.